Hi guys, it's Coach Anthony back at you with another edition of Animate, bringing chess to life. Today, I would like to introduce you to the idea of material. That is, the team who has more power pieces and pawns will most of the time win the game of chess. Let's see this in action. Okay guys, in this position, it's clear to see the white team is winning completely in the material department. How do we know that? Well, in terms of power pieces, the white team has a queen and a rook versus just a rook for the black team. And in terms of little guys, well, the white team has four of those versus four for the black team. So from a pawn perspective, it's equal but the difference in the power pieces are so great that this is just a simple win for the white team. Now, in previous videos, we'd been talking about indirect attack and we'd looked at some basic winning positions. And if you haven't done so, then I suggest you look out for those videos. I'll link them in the description box below. So the whole idea is to eventually go after the opponent's king when they have no other defenders left. This brings us to an important concept and that concept is of trading. So when you're material ahead, you have more power pieces than your opponent, it's definitely gonna favor you to trade down. And as we trade down, it makes the job easier. So let's see this in action. So it's white's turn to move here and we have a favorable trade rook for rook upon snapping off this rook there's only really one answer for the black team and that is to take back but now we see the black team is expected to defend its king with only four pawns just those four little guys and as i always said don't forget about the little guys but in this circumstance i mean they're up against a queen it's white's turn to move and there you go one of them's gone already this is not looking good so as we see well the black team can try and uh, dodge for a little while however the black team is now reduced to just sort of running around and the white team has a clear plan and that is quite simply to get a second queen. And there isn't much that the black team can do about this. They have to wait for the inevitable really. And as we see, there isn't much the black team can do now. If you remember, our tactic of making the king walk the plank then we see that there is some footsteps here and there's nothing that the king can do about it let's just make the footsteps complete so chickety check here I thought it was black turns to move it's not oh sorry because it's chickety check my bad should have noticed that okay and as we see, there is just nothing to happen. We make them walk the plank, game over. In this next position, we're gonna do another material count and we can see in terms of power pieces, the black team has one rook and the white team has a knight. And in terms of little guys, black team has two and the white team has two. So it looks like it's almost equal in this position however this position is in fact another easy win for black even though the position seems equal in terms of material and this once again goes back to our idea of indirect attack now the whole idea is if you can create a basic winning position then as we've seen there's nothing the other team can really do about it. Once you know the technique of how to win, then it's won. And 
black has a wonderful chance. Now, before I tell you, I would like you to pause your video and see if you can come up with any creative way of making the black team win. I'm back. Let's check the answer. Right, so the clue is within these two little guys here because we have two of the little guys versus one and from our earliest days one of the things we knew that was special about little guys is that if they get to the other side of the board hey they can become a queen so that's really really important in these positions here and we see that if the black pawn was to move forward and the white pawn was to capture then our pawn on c3 would be free to make it to the end of the board now the only piece that the white team has that's available to help is their horsey so in comes a very ruthless move and that is we slap off the horsey well the white team is forced to take back and then we continue with our plan and we get ourselves a queen unfortunately the pawn on b5 will never see the light of day after yes you guessed it queen to b1 keeps an eye on this guy king comes over to try and help the other pawn so that's one down and one to go this is not going to help because the king is securely got it blocked and then we can just wait well the king hasn't really got too many things it can do then we can block it completely and the pawn is lost and hey presto we have a basic winning position king and queen versus king and if you remember we can see that the white king the location it's closest to the first rank and closest to the h file so how do we get push it back to the first rank or h file well it's on rank two so we can find a move like queen to e3 oh sorry white's turn to move got to pay attention on who turn, whose turn it is to move. I mean, in this case, it's even worse for the for the white king because anywhere it goes, it's going to be on the edge. So, unfortunately, it's on this edge. So we keep it locked there by queen to g5. And now, the white king is in the cage of doom. So what do we do? Bring your king. Bring your king again. And good night game over so in summary we see that having more material than your opponent is definitely desirable why because it allows you more chances to trade and create a basic winning position such as two queens king and queen versus king king and rook versus king and lead you to victory Please like and subscribe and see you all on the next video.